Hello and thank you for joining us today. My name is Patty Duque and I'm here with Elisa Freeman. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Not a problem. So Elisa is actually an international best-selling author and she's co-authored this book called Elevate Your Mindset. Now, do you want to tell us a little bit about this whole chapter that you've written on creative mind? So if you yeah. were with me when I was about nine years old, yeah. you would have found yourself in my lounge room in Noosa. Do you know where Noosa is? Beautiful, in Queensland, just yeah. north of Brisbane. Absolutely. That's right. Yes, and this is where I grew up. Uh, in our lounge room, it was a 70s style place and you could hear the beach in the distance rolling away there and in this lounge room every single surface was filled with sculptures and every wall was was filled with art and there was a piano in the corner wow and this particular day my mum had told me to not interrupt her while she was having a conversation so she okay. said sit down Alyssa no whatever you do you must not interrupt yeah. so I sat there while my mother was having a conversation with a woman this woman was uh, very, very well dressed in the latest designer clothes. She was dripping in gold and had a blonde hair all tied back very, very neatly. And my mother, my mother had long chocolate brown hair that she wound up and put on a bun in her, on her head. Beautiful. And she had these Coke bottle glasses, uh, a, a, a dress that she tie dyed and made and designed herself and sandals. And there was something wrong though because she was having this conversation and my mother was stumbling over her words. She was awkward and uncomfortable. And there was even a bit of sweat starting to pool around oh, her right. forehead. And I knew something was wrong, but I wasn't allowed to do anything about it. Mm. And it, it was incredibly distressful to me to see mm. there's something wrong with mum. Mm. And I can't do anything. I've been told to sit still. After a little while, the woman left. And my mother came and sat down next to me. She slumped down and she said, Oh. I said, Mum, Mum, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she said, I sold a painting. And it made me realise something really interesting. And I think I made a decision right then and there on the spot. And that was that there's something wrong when people have this incredible skill, but they don't fully uh, value themselves for it. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is not just in the arts. But there was something so wrong about that that I was, uh, and of course she would have sold it for the price of the canvas and some paints. <laughs> yes, right. And my mother struggled with that most of her life. And I saw that this pattern was occurring everywhere else as well in many, many people's lives. Yeah. And so this is why I wrote about the creative mind because the thing is, is that everyone has creativity in them. Absolutely. It's not always expressed in the arts like uh, writing or painting or drawing yeah. or music yeah it might be problem solving it might be working out some uh, mathematical equation it all uses a creative part of the brain yeah so yeah so this is about the helping people use their creativity tap into it to move ahead in their lives that's beautiful do you want to tell us a little bit about any other hurdles or any hurdles that you might have had? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all have those, don't we? <laughs> yes. So, I, um, I went to school and didn't learn very much. Okay. And it was a very, very difficult time for me. It's probably the most difficult, difficult time in my life was wow. mm -hmm. um, being, not being able to get things at school, not being able to yeah. understand things. I had a lot of trouble learning to read, a lot of trouble writing, and I was pretty much branded there and then on the spot as someone of low intelligence. Mm, okay. And I, it, well, it seemed evident. You know, I couldn't learn like the other kids. And I pretty much went through all of school. Uh, I don't know how I got through, but I yeah. got through somehow. Yeah. Thank goodness for meditation. I think it was the other thing that <laughs> saved me. But you know, this, what was really uh, interesting is later in life when I made a decision that I wanted to try to learn, I started to do some uh, Kumon maths, wow. which is a particular Japanese style of yeah. mathematics. And my tutor at the time just said, there's something not quite right. 
Oh. I want you to go and see a specialist. Oh. Okay. And so she said I had a year three mathematical uh, ability. And, and how was, old were you at that time? I was about 22. Right, okay. Yeah. So, and of course at this point I just thought, oh, maybe I'm just too dumb to even learn basic maths. So she sent me to a specialist and I went to a specialist and the specialist within the first meeting said, you're dyslexic. And it was the first time I'd ever really even heard, didn't even know what that meant. Yeah, right. But she used me as a case study. Mm -hmm. And from then on, things changed because I learnt that dyslexic people are not low intelligence at all. They, <laughs> they actually have a really high intelligence. And I don't know whether that's because we've got to work so hard to learn or whether it comes with it. I'm not sure. But it opened the whole world to me. Wow. It made all the difference to realise and to own it. It's just, yes, I'm dyslexic. And okay. sometimes I get my words mixed up. Sometimes things get muddled. Sometimes it's hard to read. I have to work hard to read. But writing a book was really one of these things that I had to do. Really? Yeah. Because if I can do this, yeah. <laughs> then <laughs> anyone can do this if they set their mind to it. I love that. I love your whole story and, and the fact how that's probably, do you consider yourself a very creative person as well? I think everyone is, yeah. but yes, I've been steeped in the arts all my life, so I've, um, it's been one of those things, it's been a big part of my life. And do you think that, what I think is fascinating and I think is beautiful is the fact that, do you think that maybe dyslexia had something to do with that? Like if, if someone sort of labelled you with dyslexia and then you thought, I have been able to do everything I've ever needed to do my own way. Yes. Exactly. Which is beautiful because you didn't like, obviously, as whatever teacher told you, you know, you have to go, I mean, sorry, do you have to go and see someone? And then you realize, but I've managed to do it. That's right. It's a really interesting thing, too, about the brain. And that's what I guess is, mm. I've been fascinated with the brain for years and done lots of study on it. But what's really interesting is that when I was a teenager, I could write poetry. Beautiful poetry. In fact, I won awards against adults in poetry writers. Now, how is it that I could write poetry, but I could barely write a shopping list? And I think it's because it just uses a different part of the Absolutely. brain. Absolutely. And, and, and you'll often see this with, with dyslexic people too. They'll be able to create something quite amazing. But I know that my poetry was, came from somewhere else and it worked. And I think that's beautiful. <laughs> I, I love how you obviously have created it and you've made that very very creative so tell us about support and resources okay so there's two main things yeah. that people need to make change in their life to transform their life and they need support and tools absolutely that's it just support and tools yeah and if they get the right support mm. so including a team a coach uh, you know, other people that might be able to, and resources like good books. Yes. Uh, and also to the, the actual tools to do it. So not only just being, not having things done to you yes. and being fixed by someone else, but knowing those tools yourself so that you can actually use them on yourself and, and, and spread the love, really. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. And it sounds that you've had quite a few of these resources and you do share those with people. Indeed, indeed. That's what my whole premise is, is that I do transformational coaching. Beautiful. And I work with not only helping people, but I give them the tools so that they can continue that work themselves for the rest of their life, whether they continue yeah. to work with me or not. Yeah. Uh, I believe that um, if, if I have these, that they're, they're for people to use. And, uh, and I absolutely love that. Yeah. I think that is beautiful. I think that's... Many people need people like you in their <laughs> lives, I believe. And really, congratulations for writing a book, for stepping outside your comfort zone. It seems like it's amazing. And like you say, if you can do it, anybody can do it. But really, you've proven that it doesn't matter whatever anybody is going to say to you or what you can and can't do, you can do it. That's beautiful. 
So thank you so much, Alisa, for joining us today. If anybody is interested in buying the book, where would they get it? Oh, they can go to my website. Sure. AlyssaFreeman.com.au mm -hmm. and it'll be on one of the pages there. But yes, thank you so much Fabulous. for having me. No. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here. Well, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. And make sure you get your hands on one of these.